everyone uh, good evening uh, can you all see me and hear me so today's class is going to be on doppler physics uh, as you guys know this is pretty important uh, uh, you know and something that we struggle the most as residents is to get those perfect doppler tracings so that's what my attempt today is going to be not just the theoretical part which will help you write the answers but also you know tell you uh, a bit about the settings how to optimize the image mm. is what i'll be talking about okay so that's what the idea will be divided into two parts one part is the theory the physics behind how we get these images the second part is going to be the terminologies according to the society of uh, vascular ultrasound that we are supposed to be using in our reports and then i shall be talking about the settings and how do we optimize the images okay so that's how the lecture has been and uh, obviously uh, we'll talk about how the most important thing is you know how abnormal tracings will look like what do you see when there is an obstruction what do you see when there is a stenosis okay classes 1 hour or 2 hour 1 hour um so there are 40 slides so i think 1 1 hour 15 minutes max okay so i'll try and finish it in 1 hour for sure um there is one more recording which i'll be sharing which is ultrasound elastography okay so i don't know if you can see i had conjunctivitis yesterday so i couldn't see at all you know not make the class but today i've made this so tonight i'll i'll uh, make the elastography class and we'll record it by tomorrow and upload it okay so that's pending from my end so that'll be done so that way we cover two very important parts of ultrasound uh, physics okay so that's what the plan is but uh, i wanted to take this live because this is what is more relevant to was right elastography is more of a uh, recent advanced sort of a theory question and my thesis was on elastography actually so i don't know how many of you've uh, seen elastography is being done in your institutes but that's something which is pretty easy uh, you know to do not much of a challenge as far as the practical aspect is concerned but doppler obviously is a lot of things which you know you keep learning and even when i teach you right now i i don't know doppler very very well you know there are uh, doppler is a very long learning curve and you keep practicing you keep getting better at it you know so this is the basic things that we need to know and then as you get, uh, you know practice more and more ultrasounds more and more dopplers more and more tweakings in your settings you keep getting better at it yeah so that's what it is you know and there is nobody who can say that i am a master of doppler physics at least i have not met anybody who is like very very confident in you know doing everything but let's see let's see how we can get better okay so let's start off so obviously we need to start uh, about uh, start the class and any answer that you get with the doppler effect you always start your answer with this concept here of doppler shift what is doppler effect what is doppler shift so it all boils down to the fact that whenever there is a moving source of sound the frequency that we are going to hear is going to depend on the direction of that source of sound okay so that is what is very important it came as dnb paper oh that's nice yeah it's very common question now from ultrasound physics what else will they ask so they end up asking doppler yeah so that's why this is very important from theory as well as practical aspect i think one of the most important classes from physics so what you need to remember take this example of this ambulance when this ambulance is coming towards me i am the stationary observer i will hear a higher frequency of the sound i will hear the ambulance seeming louder but as the ambulance is going away or the police car is going away from me it the frequency decreases means i hear the sound getting lighter and lighter so that is what happens this is what is the doppler effect that we know as a layman now how do i translate this into my ultrasound so in my ultrasound what you need to remember is the only things which are moving are the blood cells right are the rbcs is the blood rest of it is not moving so that is the signal the b mode image is all about amplitude what is the amplitude of the echoes which are coming that's how we generate a brightness mode that's how we generate black and white and b mode when it comes to doppler everything has the same amplitude now i'm not concerned about amplitude now i'm concerned about frequency yes that's the fundamental difference which is frequency you understand frequency is this this amplitude is this so amp amplitude comes into play in b mode frequency comes into play in doppler that's what you need to understand so 
if you have to define it, this is the first line that you will write. It's the change in the frequency of sound waves which is occurring because of the motion of a sound source. Now come to this. Again, this is what I would love if you could write this. You know, if you can draw this sort of an image in your paper, it will really get you good marks. Always draw schematics, um, you know, flow charts. All of these things are much better than writing a prose format of the answer. That's something that you need to learn, right? All of these images that we use in the classes, try and you know use them in the actual exam that really helps so what you need to remember when there is a stationary target the transmitted frequency and the received frequency remain the same anytime i have an rbc so now the stationary object is the transducer i am keeping and the rbcs are the ambulance or the police car so when the rbcs are moving towards me now what is going to happen now the frequency which i am receiving right is going to be more than the transmitted frequency and this is what we call as a positive frequency shift so this is what is defined as a positive frequency shift means blood is coming towards me Whereas if the transmitted frequency is lesser than the received frequency, this is what you want to remember uh, is the negative frequency shift, right? So we want to see what is the transducer frequency and what is the frequency that I'm receiving back, whether it's a positive frequency shift or a negative frequency shift. And this is what we use to determine the direction. And this is what is the evolved version of the same thing that we just said. Positive frequency shift went towards, negative frequency shift went away, right? So this is what is the Doppler effect. Now let's get to the specifics. What do I care about this frequency? Frequency shift. This frequency frequency shift one told us the direction. Can it also tell me the velocity of this police car or ambulance? Yes, it can. And that is what is very useful. It tells me the velocity of the blood flow. So this is what now I use as a numerical. We already know our frequency shift, right? Which is the transmitted and the reflected frequency. So the difference between them, as we saw, is the frequency shift. I know that frequency shift. So I also know the transmitted frequency. I want to know V. V is the velocity of the blood. This is what is unknown to us. This is what I want to know. Cos theta. What is theta? Very, very important. But before that, what is C? C is the velocity of sound and tissue, which is also constant. So we know everything except V. And this is how we can find out the velocity. Now let's talk about very, very important, which is Doppler angle. So this is where the blood vessel is. This is the direction of the blood flow. And this is the direction of my transducer. Always remember this. Doppler angle is the angle not between the skin and the vessel. It's the angle between the transducer beam and the blood vessel. This is a common mistake people do. They assume that it's the skin. No, it is going to be the transducer and the blood vessel. This is what you need to remember, right? So this is the direction. This is the angle. That's what you will write. What is the Doppler angle? It's the angle which is between the beam and the blood vessel vessel long axis of the blood vessel right so this is what is the doppler angle and cos theta cos of that angle is going to be a part of it so little bit of maths what do you think is the ideal angle what is cos zero cos zero is one cos 90 is zero can i ever be parallel to the vessel I can never be parallel to the vessel that my cause will be zero. That's something which is not possible. I can be perpendicular to the vessel, but that is something which I don't want. Whenever I'm perpendicular to my vessel, I'm not going to get any velocity. My velocity reading is going to come out as zero. So what do we learn here? We learn that cause 90 is zero, cause zero is one. So I need to be somewhere closer to cause zero. For that, let's see what is cos 60. Cos 60 is a doable angle. That's an angle which I can do and that gives me a cos of 0.5. So always what is my aim? My aim is to be between 60 degree and 0 degree. Because look at this, 60 to 90 between 30 degrees, I am losing half of the signal. But between these 60 degrees, I am gaining half of the signal. Are you getting this? So this difference is what I want to utilize. So our optimal Doppler angle is always less than 60 degree. All right. So that's what you want to remember. And again, you can draw this graph as well. So more or less the same thing. 
cos 90 is going to be 0, whereas cos 1, cos 0 is 1 here, right? So that is what you want to remember. And they are just showing us that if you are in between this range, somewhere close to 60 to 45, it's more or less a plateau, right? It comes as a plateau. So my error here is minimum. So this is what I want to be. I want to be near 60 to 45 degrees, which is a realistic angle, right? So what you will remember, less than 60 degree is optimal angle. I don't want to be more than 60 degrees. So whenever, let's say this is how my probe is placed and my vessel is like this, what I will do is I will try to get an angle correct. I will try to change the patient position and I will try to somehow get an angle of the vessel like this. So this is what you need to remember here. Very, very important. As the Doppler angle increases, error is greater. As the Doppler angle decreases, the error is minimum. So just to give you an example.